Hello everybody. Over the next 10 minutes we'll be talking about how to bring MRI quality to the MRI directed biopsy pathway. Here are my disclosures. For a typical outpatient urological population where the significant cancer prevalence is about 30%, the high negative predictive value of MRI enables the reduction of the number of patients undergoing biopsies and it reduces the diagnosis of indolent cancers. There's also a greater precision of stratification and an increased detection of clinically significant disease, which speaks to the rule-in ability of MRI. Now, we are all aware that the higher the clinical suspicion, the greater is the cancer detection rate. However, you can look at this data in a different way. For example, if you have a Pyrides 5 case, you can say that 25% are false positive. For a Pyrides 4 case, 54% are false positives. So if you take the prevalence of each of these categories into account, you can then estimate that about 30% of biopsy-naive men with a positive MRI, in fact, have negative histology or are false positives. And there are other issues with the MRI-directed pathway, including image acquisition interpretations, directing biopsies, as we all are aware, there's a steep learning curve for MRI interpretations and biopsy performance. We know that radiologists who work alone and those who work in teams perform differently. We estimate that about 50% of men don't get benefit from gadolinium injections. And we know that if it is time intensive to read and report, and to contour the prostate and the lesions, particularly when some of these are not funded activities. So how much variance is there in the MRI-directed biopsy pathway? Well, it's possible to look at the negative predictive value variance, and it's possible to look at the positive predictive value variance. If you look at the negative predictive value variance, you will see that the variance is very little. And here is the negative predictive value. You get it's 91%, but the variance is actually quite tight. On the other hand, if you look at positive predictive value variance, you see quite a large amount of variation. So this is data in 26 US centers, where you can see the positive predictive value ranges from about 27% to about 75%. And there are multiple reasons for this, but the bottom line is that you get inconsistent biopsy yields because of this variation in positive predictive value. When you start to examine the, the causes of the heterogeneity, we can basically divide those into the patient, the imaging and the imagers, the biopsy procedure and the people that examine biopsies, i.e. the pathologist and the urologist, and of course, the effectiveness of the teams. So this is the data that I showed you earlier, showing you the individual studies. Now, when we look on the negative predictive value side, we know that the negative predictive value correlates negatively with prevalence. Regarding the impact of the imaging and the imagers, we know that the image quality and the reader sensitivity and specificity are also important. But because people don't undergo biopsies after a negative scan, so the effect of the biopsy operators is reduced, resulting in this rather low variance that you can observe. On the other hand, when you look at the positive side, you can see that there is a great deal of variability depending on where you put the cutoff. So if you were to put a cutoff at three and above, then the variation would be from here to here. If you put the cutoff at four and above, the variation will be from here to here. We also have to remember there is differences in the variation within a category. So look at the variation within Pyrides 4 compared to Pyrides 5 and compared to Pyrides 3. Of course, on this side, you've also got the biopsy operator and the histopathologist. And these additional human factors also affect the greater variance on the positive predictive value. So how do you begin to minimize the variation in the imaging and the imagers? Well, this paper was recently published. And essentially, it said that regarding image quality, there needed to be a check for the technical compliance of any images that were read. 
and specific statements had to be made regarding the impact of image quality on the diagnostic ability of the images. In other words, would they be able to rule in and rule out clinically significant cancers? The education and training of radiologists was considered important, but there had to be continuous medical education. The performance of radiologists had to be monitored either internally or externally, and they had to participate in multidisciplinary teams. And here are the full recommendations just to show you, but the paper is at the bottom there, so you can always look it up. Another way of leveling up the imaging and the imagers is to automate. And one way of automated, automating is to do automated acquisitions and automated detection and delineations and gland outlining. And this is some software that's been developed by Siemens Healthineers that that enables you to do this. And other manufacturers are also working on similar levels of automation. While we're talking about quality, of course, multidisciplinary teams are absolutely essential. And let's talk about them. Multidisciplinary team working improves the efficiency of referral pathways. We know that. It reduces the variations both in diagnosis and in, in therapy. It improves adherence to guidelines. It improves the confidence of payers and patients. And of course, it's going to be integral to the accreditation process. So what's the difference between certification and accreditation? Certification is about the individual, the radiologist, the urologist, and the pathologist. Accreditation is for the service providers, in other words, the hospital or even the MDT. So accreditation evaluates the effectiveness of multidisciplinary teams who need to get a number of things right to be accredited. So let's just show you an example of some recent data showing how well multidisciplinary teams could work. And this is data from three hospitals in the west of London, and they aim to perform MRI reporting and biopsies on the same day. You can see that over a three year period, they had 1700 patients. And the mean time from GP referral to the MRI and biopsy was nine days with 50% of people avoiding a biopsy. Now, when they did perform a biopsy, look at the variation in, in the detection rates for pyrides three with a high PSA density and pyrides 5. Look at the small variations that you see between the three different centers. Uh, this speaks to the importance of multidisciplinary team working. We need to assure quality in a number of ways. The first thing we need to do is identify the sources of variability. And as I've said, this is to related to patients, images, images, biopsies, and team working. We need to have measurements of these sources of variability. So that's the image quality assessments, the compliance with technical standards, the cancer detection rates, missed cancers, etc., etc. We then need to devise performance measures for the main individuals within the chain. So this is certification. The images, the urologists, and the pathologists. And finally, we need to think about the key performance indicators for the diagnostic units turnaround times, biopsies avoided, inter and intracenter variability, but focusing on the positive side because that is what demonstrates the team working. So here are my conclusions. If we're going to deliver a high quality prostate MRI diagnostic service, we first of all need to identify the sources of variability both on the negative side and on the positive side we need to mo monitor the performance of the main players and of course of the diagnostic team and evaluate their impact on the variability observed. We need to measure the impact of that variability on the effectiveness of the pathway. We need to devise strategies that enable us to control these variations to improve the effectiveness of the pathway. And finally, we need to to assure the end-to-end -end quality of the entire diagnostic chain, which, as I have said, is best done with multidisciplinary teams. Thank you very much.